Hello everyone, in this video we will see how to become a self-taught mathematician. This video is brought to you by Question Response, the channel where you will find the answer to everything. Thanks to Nika Lazarian, Matthew Graham, Elias Barota and Azam Qureshi for their answers to this question, we'll start with Nika Lazarian's first answer. My undergraduate degree is in English, growing up I hated math, partly because I never believed I'd be any good at it, partly due to being surrounded by attitudes similar to the response you received, if you have to ask, you probably can't. I didn't get interested in mathematics until my late twenties, what initially was a desire to obtain some minimal technical knowledge so that I could understand statistical techniques involved in policy analysis, that's what I thought I'd study in grad school, turned into a full-blown love affair with math. I fell in love with math, hard and fast, and despite not having had any math courses since high school, I was able to quickly teach myself most of the undergraduate curriculum before enrolling in a graduate analysis course. I now have a PhD in what is essentially applied mathematics. I am nowhere close to calling myself a mathematician, there is so much beautiful math out there still to be learned, and I'm not at all good at it, but it doesn't stop me from loving it, or wanting to learn more. And I love, love, love teaching it. I wanted to share a piece of valuable advice that I once received. In the initial stages of graduate studies, when I was full of self-doubt about whether or not I'd be fit enough to stomach math, one of my professors told me that so long as I enjoyed it, I should keep at it and keep pushing myself, until I found my edge and got to the point when it was no longer fun. If I never get to that point, that much better. I really hope I don't. Others have given you some very nice practical advice on how to go about learning math, and I do not think I can add any more to it. But I thought the advice that my professor gave me would be helpful to you as well. We can continue with Matthew Graham's answer. In order to become a self-taught mathematician you'll need a few things in place. 1. Have money spend on books. 2. Lots of time, lots of it. 3. Absolute determination and persistence. Work ethic is key here. 4. Willing to spend years upon years upon years upon years of your life learning math. Because to get to the level of a modern mathematician, that's what you need. 5. It would be optimal if you were young and single without any responsibilities and had a trust fund to fall back onto so you can spend 8 hours a day studying math through the week. But I assume you don't have this. I think this is the biggest hurdle of them all. I shall proceed to write my answer without this point in mind. Start out with the basics. Review your elementary algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. You have no business at this stage getting into that fancy, abstract algebra stuff. Just make sure you cover your basics. From here you will start getting into proof writing, as this is an absolutely essential skill in mathematics. You cannot call yourself a mathematician without ever having done a proof. There are several great books on this subject. I'll link the books at the bottom of this answer. You should work through two books in proof writing. You need to have a very solid foundation in this skill. I cannot stress this enough. Without the elementary algebra, trig and proof writing skills, you have no future as a mathematician. From here I'm going to suggest working through Spivak's book in calculus. All the way from chapter 0 through the end of the book, parts 1 through 5. This is no easy feat, you should take this very slow and steady. After you're done with Spivak, find a good abstract algebra book or two to work through. I recommend working through Fraley's book then going back to Dummett and Foot. You'll learn a lot if you do this and go at the correct pace. Again, this isn't a race. All of this is very hard material and going slow and steady will guarantee mastery of these basic concepts. From here you'll go on to complex variables. Visual Complex Analysis is a great book for learning this material. As before, go very slowly through this book and take your time. There is no need to rush it. At this point it is too difficult to name a logical next step as there are very many paths you could pursue. I haven't even brought up differential equations, probability, statistics, combinatorics, graph theory, topology, etc. The best option would be take classes at a local community college if you can. Online classes could work but this still beats learning it totally on your own. If you actually were to follow the above recommendations in terms of books and areas of study, you should expect to spend about a year on each area. You must go slow and make sure you really understand everything in the books. You should only do one section every two to three days and do approximately 20, or more, problems from each section to reinforce and develop your understanding, math stack exchange, ready. Access this answer and support the author as a Quora Plus subscriber. Access all answers reserved by Matthew Graham for Quora Plus subscribers. Access exclusive answers from thousands more participating creators in Quora Plus. Browse ad free and support creators. Start free trial. Learn more. The next answer is from Elias Barota. Spend a lot of time studying proofs in mathematical logic. Learn basic proof methods, then read math books written by good mathematicians. A. Mathematical Logic. Mathematical Logic by S. C. Clean. Clean was one of the greatest logicians in history and a marvelous writer. The same can be said of Tarksy. I recommend his introduction to logic, and to the methodology of deductive sciences, if Clean's too advanced. 
Grise and Schneider's illogical approach to discrete math is elementary but pre-beginner friendly. Mathematical logic by Schoenfield, graduate level and elegant. B. Proofs. You learn about proofs proper in A. If you need more help, the classic How to Solve It by Polya, Fundamentals of Mathematics, An Introduction to Proofs, Logic, Sets, and Numbers by Schroeder and How to Read and Do Proofs, An Introduction to Mathematical Thought Processes by Salo. The last one is the best introductory book on proofs I've encountered. Also, properly understand the difference between proof by contradiction and proof of negation. Most mathematicians do not understand the difference between the two. Most think any proof which derives a contradiction is always a proof by contradiction. Not always. Click the link text below and read these two papers in the order listed. Proof of negation and proof by contradiction. By Professor Andre Bauer. A proof by contradiction is not a proof that ends with a contradiction. By Professor Robert Harper. Zero. For basic geometry I recommend basic geometry by Burkhoff and Bietla. Burkhoff was one of America's best mathematicians, truly world class. Don't underestimate the importance of geometry. I was glad to find that Richard Bellman said the same, he felt geometry was too advanced to be treated in high school. The way it's done is sloppy. In reality, it should be taught with extreme attention to detail and emphasis on proof writing and why those proofs are correct. Geometry is generally a student's first encounter with an axiom system, first impressions last a lifetime for most students. Another marvelous geometry text is Elementary Geometry from an Advanced Standpoint by Moise. Beautiful book. A book with the best diagrams I've ever seen is Geometry by its history, the authors have amazing taste. 1. For Calculus, I recommend Calculus I and 2 by Apostol, Calculus by Spivak or University Calculus by Mori. The latter most is highly underrated. Possibly the best calculus book I know of is Calculus and Analytic Geometry, with supplementary problems by Thomas Jr. It's a shame that book isn't in print anymore. It should never been supplanted, and I hope Apostols never are. To my knowledge, Caltech is the only school that still used Apostol for its Calc 1, 3. Courses. 2. For Analysis, Analysis I and 2 by Hill, Fundamentals of Abstract Analysis by Gleason, Principles of Mathematical Analysis by Rudin, and Mathematical Analysis by Apostol. If you're looking for a constructive approach, real analysis, a constructive approach by Bridger, he did a lot of work with Gabriel Stolzenberg who was a contemporary and reviewer of Eret Bishop's Foundations of Constructive Analysis. Bishop and Gleason are probably the most concise authors I've ever read. Their prose and command of the English language is maybe rivaled only by Donald E. Newth, Richard P. Stanley, John Reardon and Professor Robert Harper. To the point that you will be confused often because they speak so clearly and concisely, every word counts. Misk. By the time you get through one, you should be a fledgling mathematician. If you get through two, you are. Beyond that, go take classes in real and complex analysis, number theory, whatever you want. Number theory is beautiful, so is geometry. By the way, most of these authors emphasize solving lots of problems. You must work the exercises and do mathematics. For most of these books, some or all answers are in the back or have separate solution manuals. The following answer is from Azam Qureshi. My nine-year-old daughter is teaching herself a level mathematics, the exam that 18-year-olds do in the UK. She's definitely no whiz kid. Here's how she's doing it. She does an A-level past paper exam and then goes through the solution herself. When she doesn't understand the solution, which is pretty much all the time for the first few papers, she'll Google the question and usually find a video explanation and go through that. If it's still not clear, she Skypes a tutor in the Philippines who explains what she's stuck on. And she keeps doing past papers until she gets as in them. That's it. It couldn't be any easier. You can use this technique to get you to around master's level, degree, in mathematics. This is the end of the video, I hope you have more answers. You can now subscribe if you like the video more, remember to also leave a like, it helps for the referencing on YouTube. Here is the end of the video, leave a comment to tell us if these answers are more useful to you. See you soon.